Hey, you're out of tune. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to you. You are blowing out of tune over there, okay? But you say, but you say, no, nah, I just tuned to my, my handy tuner. Um, the one I have loaded onto my smartphone, my digital tuner. I say, well, you're still out of tune. How can that be, you say? Well, that's what this video is all about today. Tune like a pro. We're going to talk about a couple of things that maybe you didn't think about. Now, this is for all of you who are already out playing a little bit. You might be intermediate, semi-pro, whatever. I don't care what level you're at, but you know uh, about moving the mouthpiece up and down the, the neck, you know, uh, moving it in if you're flat, pulling it back out if you're sharp, right? This video will go beyond those techniques, all right? You, and all of you, I'm sure, have had that situation where, you, where you've been in, let's say, band class, and your teacher walks around with a handheld digital tuner and you play a note, selected note, right? And each of you play that note, and you play it until the tuner says, I'm happy with it, right? That's how we tune. Most of the time, we tune that way. Then you go outside the band room and you start playing outside, and uh-oh, there are some changes. Or... Perhaps your marching band is playing a, you know, a, a drill in the, in the sun in the afternoon in the stadium. Pep band comes back that night, same intonation, same horns, and you sit down and you play, and you're out of tune again, right? And you didn't take time to retune to anything, the digital tuner or whatever. So this, uh, or your band, maybe you play in a, in a jazz combo and you've, uh, you've tuned up to the piano and you start playing. Or let's just say an R&B combo, blues, R&B, pop combo, whatever it is. You tune up to maybe the bass, piano, whatever it is. You've tuned up and you sound pretty good, right? Until you start playing. What happens then? That's a great question. Tuning, once again, is a, is a, is a moving target. And it, everybody that you're playing with is involved in that, right? They're either in tune or they're out of tune, or you're in tune relative to them or out of tune relative to them as well. Yes, I used to be able to speak complete sentences before I started making videos. All right, here we go. Most of us will tune to a tuner, a digital tuner, right? Either a strobe design or whatever, and we're playing a, maybe even a long tone into a tuner, and we're sitting there looking for the, you know, the big green happy face. That tuner is a pretty good one to use, by the way. Or we're, we're, we're getting all four of the lines in the strobe tuner to stop, or the little, the, the little hot dog in the middle to stop moving around and just kind of hold in place. And, you know, that's better than nothing. But here's where there's a fault there in that whole d d design. It gets you into the habit of tuning with your eyes and not your ears right? You're tuning with your eyes. You're watching this little thing and you're watching your note relative uh, to the digital tuner. So you are in tune. In fact, that in fact is a snapshot of where you are at at that moment on that day in your playing life, all right? As you move out into the field and start playing with people or you climb up onto the bandstand and you start playing, say an hour into the gig, things start to fall apart. Why is that? Well, because our embouchures get tired, our wind gets tired, the reed gets tired, whatever, right? Or how many times have you climbed up onto the bandstand and you're sure that you're in tune because you've tuned to your tuner and suddenly the guitar player reaches over to his amplifier at the start of the gig and he turns up to 11. The drummer then has to keep up and the bass player has to keep up. Pretty soon the one the one wind instrument on stage is having to keep up as well. You're blowing really, really hard to keep up with it. It's just human nature, even if you have a microphone and uh, you're playing through the stack as well. It's human nature to try to sound as loud as everything around you. So there you are. And that tends to drive your tone down into the flat zone. Oh, there you go. So tuning, once again, is a relative issue. It's a moving target. And being in tune relative to a digital tuner is one thing. And it is helpful. And we're going to circle back around to why that's helpful in just a minute. But how many of you practice playing in tune? None of you. I know. How many of you, what do I mean by that even? Practice playing in tune? Great question. How many of you practice to, like, say, something that generates a tone? Like a, like a digital piano. I, I have one here. I'm blessed to have that in the studio. And I tend to tune to A, right? A? You should too. Um, 
Concert A is uh, F sharp for my E flat buddies, and it's B for my B flat buddies. I just happen to have my tenor sax handy here. Right there. And I'm going to see my see where I'm at this morning here. I'm, I'm not warmed up, but I'm going to play this concert A, my B, and let's see, let's just see what it is. So I started out out of tune, and I lipped it down a little bit, and I started to blow a little bit more in tune. You heard the difference, right? Um, so tuning to something that generates tone. Now, we don't all have pianos. There is a solution. There is hope for you. You can tune to drone, practice drone tracks. Now, not those little things that fly around the air. Drone, like a, like an, a, a cello. There are many practice drone tracks on YouTube, right? It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to practice too because you're tuning once again to your ear and you can get them in all keys, right? It's really easy to find practice drone tracks. You go to the search bar on YouTube and, and type that in. Uh, practice drone trap. Uh, dr <laughs> Hello. Hello. Practice drone traps. No, practice drone track in C, right? And that'll load you up with all kinds of options. Pick one and do that every day. Blow to a drone track as opposed to blowing to your tuner. And use your ears to pull yourself in tune. Another way that you can play and practice playing in tune is to engage a practice buddy. What do I mean by that? Somebody that plays the same instrument as you. Maybe not a pianist, maybe not a guitarist, but another saxophone player. Or if you're a saxophone player, even better yet, how about a trumpet player? Sound pretty good? Yeah, yeah. So you can get together maybe once or twice a week if you can and sit down and just go over a couple of charts together. That's really going to help with your sense of playing and practicing your intonation. Now, here's another thing. Every saxophone, no matter what it is, by design, every saxophone has notes that don't sound their best. Some notes sound really good. You ever notice when you're playing in some keys, for example, your horn just sings and then other keys your horn doesn't sing? Well, that's because, you know, the inherent design of the saxophone, this uh, five or six feet of, of brass, brass tubing, it takes a lot of air to make it work. But there are also inherent flaws and notes that will always be out of tune. And you've discovered that. I'm sure you have. Uh, just the other day, one of my students is a brilliant soloist, you know, but had some intonation issues and really hadn't gone through the horn and figured out which tones were out of tune, which tones were dead on in tune no matter what, and, and which, uh, you know, of the notes on the horn sounded... Uh, it kind of muffy. Some of them do, like my middle D, for example. I'm gonna demonstrate. Sounds kind of hairy. It's gonna look like the, like I'm blowing through the uh, the the wool socks of the forgotten man. Check this out. Relative, let's say, to an F sharp. Less hairy, but now a G. Hear that? That's that's just wide open, bright and wide open. So what you need to do, and I, I understand this is true for any reed or woodwind instrument, is that, that the, all of them have peculiarities in intonation, right? All of them. So, but we're just talking about saxophone today. So here's a, here's, here's, a, here's a job for you. Job one for you today is to get your tuner. I don't care if it's the one that makes a big green smiley face or a strobo tuner or whatever. Play for a while. Blow a bunch of arpeggios, right? Up and down, scales, whatever. Warm the horn up, make sure the brass is warm. Right? Just do that for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Brass feels warm, neck feels warm, horn is happy, all right? Now you want to sit down and take that tuner and go through every note. Start at low B flat, go all the way up to uh, F sharp if your horn has it, or F, right? And, and note where the tuner is. After you've tuned, first of all, no, no, I don't. Wind the clock back a little bit here. First, tune up and grab that A, right? Let's, let's just grab that A. Concert A. I'm trying to prop the horn up with my knee. I don't really play that badly. Uh-oh. Time to go to the repair shop. Okay, I've done something to my horn here. What do I do? All right, anyway. <laughs> How embarrassing. 
All right, I slow. Oh, I see what I did. I did. Okay, I got it. I fixed it. All right, here we go. I moved the F key out of the. All right, here we go. Back to that. And you've done that too, so quit laughing. Get that dead on in tune with uh, your tuner, all right? And go up and down the horn and write down, make a list of all the notes that are in tune and out of tune. And you're going to find that that is probably consistent every time you grab your horn, every time you play. Those notes are going to be out. Now, my horn has got uh, F sharp. F sharp 2 generally is out of tune, and E2 is almost always out of tune. E3, top E, oddly enough, is right on the money. Low E, right on the money. But you're going to find the notes on your horn that are that are not that are not in tune, and and that's it, every horn is a little bit different. Okay, something that you got to do, and then you've got notes that once again. They just sound like they got fur on them or something. Like they've been upholstered. They just they don't sound. And that's again every saxophone. Just about every saxophone has those issues. And I'm not sure that they can be repaired out of your horn. <laughs> you can make sure your high F isn't isn't off the tracks. Yeah, that'll help. But that's something that I want you to do. And I want you to do that today, or at least as soon as you can. Get to know your horn a lot better. Okay. And in this way, you will be tuning like a pro using your ears tuning to something that helps you why your ears well because it helps you to make those super fast quick adjustments while you're out on the bandstand again the bandstand the marching band the combo whatever moving targets all of them and as you progress into the gig things change it yet they just change guitars change tune basses change tune the weather humidity temperature all of the above are working against your sense of intonation. If you can tune with your ears quickly, you're way ahead of the game. So don't think that just because you're in tune to that one note that you're going to be able to go out there and argue your way through uh, successfully. Uh, when I first started uh, uh, with this tenor sax, this is an old, old DS, O-L-D-S tenor sax. Uh, I've talked about it before in, in other issues um, of uh, this very same uh, channel. And when it came to me, uh, I've, I've had it for about a week or so, and foolishly, I accepted a recording gig. Now, I have red light fever. I'm not really your guy to bring into a recording session. Live gigs, that's me. But recording, not so much. So, uh, but for whatever reason, I don't know why, I said yes to this gig. Turns out it's like late at night, way out of town. Uh, maybe starts at 11 or 12 at night. I don't know why that late, but it's a country music gig and I show up and I'm, you know, the, but, but that's not the problem. The problem is, is I didn't know this horn. I didn't know anything about playing this horn. I didn't know how to make it play in tune. And the recording engineer kept running out and with his little handheld recorder saying, you're out of tune, you're out of tune, you're out of tune. I mean, he's having a meltdown. And, you know, I started to have a meltdown and well, you know, things you know, went further down a hill to the point that I eventually packed up and just went home. And thought, oh, so you got to know your horn. You got to know which notes are in tune, which notes are out of tune, how to set it up, how to play it properly so that it stays in tune, and how to actually play with everybody else relative to their sense of intonation and out tonation. Notice we don't say out tonation. I probably invented a new word there. But anyway, enough for today. If you have any questions, best way to reach me is through Gmail. DaveGoodSax at gmail.com. All one word, DaveGoodSax at gmail.com. Hope this helps. Now go out there and get that horn in tune.